Hi, I'm Varen Gupte, and today I'll be going over the Equilibrium Constant Lab. The purpose of this video is to go over common uh, techniques and procedures in this lab and to clear up any mistakes or misconceptions that students have or make. Uh, if you have any questions about anything in this lab, you can always consult your lab manual or go back and ask your lab TA. Before starting your lab, it's always important to clean out your glassware so you can avoid any contamination and get good results. I like you to do this by using a three-step uh, process. The first step is using solution from Alkanox and some water from the faucet, and then using a brush to clean it out. I use water to rinse out any Alkanox solution left behind. And then the third step is, is to use DEI water to rinse it out from the inside to remove any minerals stuck in there. Warning: Never use Alkanox, a brush, or tap water to clean out your cuvettes. Always use a Kim wipe and rinse with DEI water so that you don't put any, cause any scratches to be made onto the cuvette, which affects its transmission. Now, in this lab, we have two types of pipettes usually. The one shown here is a graduate pipette, which starts measuring from the tip, and that's the one you'll be using in this lab for this experiment. However, there's another pipette which looks almost exactly like this, except it starts measuring uh, at 10 milliliters. That's a very different pipette used for a different purpose. You use it for, use it like a burette for measuring solutions out and uh, pouring them, or pouring a set amount of solution into another beaker. The proper way of using this pipette is to drop the solution using the wheel, lining up the bottom of the meniscus with the appropriate line, and then, very important, using the trigger at the very end to dump your solution into the appropriate beaker. It's okay to use the same pipette for both the iron nitrate and the nitric acid. However, you want to take care that you don't cross-pollinate by using the same pipette to also take up the thiocyanate. After I made my solutions, I like to put them on a piece of brown uh, paper and label uh, on the paper so I know which solution is which and I can prevent mixing them up. I also like to do the same for my reagents. After you made your solutions, stir them with a the glass disposable pipette so you can make sure that all of the thiocyanate ions have fully reacted with the iron ions. A common misconception that many people make is to use more than two cubettes in this lab. However, the problem each is that each cubette has a different number of scratches, which will affect your absorbance rates and your values for your mole, ex mole extinction coefficient. The way you can get an accurate value is by using the same cubette in the same orientation and by carefully cleaning it down with the Kimbi between every run so that any, if any systemic error you get will cancel out at the very end and you'll get your uh, appropriate and accurate value. Whenever you're holding your cubette, always take care to make sure that you hold it on the corners or on the side that will not be measured by the spectrophotometer. For your auto zero, fill up both of your cubettes with solution E. It's extremely important to use solution E and not water because solution E serves as the best reference for all of your other solutions. It's important to make sure that the sides with the arrows face the same way because it helps to reduce error in your experiment and helps to maintain the proper orientation throughout. Next, we place solution A with the arrow pointing in the correct directions. Make sure that you can to continue using the same blank cubette instead of using your classmate's cubette so that you don't want to introduce any more error or any additional error into this experiment. After dumping the solution in your cubette into the waste beaker, you can go back, get your next solution, and be sure to rinse your uh, cubette with that solution first. Let's rinse it and dump it off. And now refill it with the appropriate solution. Okay, so now that we have the maximum absorbance values at the rate of the we want, we can go back and use these absorbance values to calculate our molar extinction coefficient. The procedure for doing so is in our lab manual. In part 2, it's extremely important to use the part 2 solutions. This is because if you use the part 1 solutions in part 2, the reason why we used part 1 solutions was because we wanted an excess of iron to react with all the thiocyanate to drive the reaction to the right by Leishat-Leder's principle by having an excess of iron nitrate. However, in part 2, if you use the part 1 iron nitrate solution, then it will once again drive the reaction all the way to the right and we won't get the proper equilibrium value. We'll be using the same pipetting procedures for transferring our solutions into the appropriate beakers. And also, we'll be repeating the same procedures with our cubettes. After getting your results for the absorbance uh, for the maximum wavelength for your part 2 solutions, you can then go back and calculate what the equilibrium values are. The calculations are discussed more in your lab notebook. When you're disposing off your waste, let your waste go into the heavy metal container. You can also dispose off your glass pipette into the glass disposal box. 
Make sure to put it only in the glass disposal box so it can be recycled because it's good for the environment. Overall, I hope you'll have had fun in this lab. And remember guys, stay classy.